Welcome back to Medwitch Med Simple. Support me by donating me on Patreon. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you so much for 400 subscribers. This video is about Coxsackie viruses. Coxsackie viruses belongs to a family known as Picorna viruses. There are two main pathogenic genus in Picorna viruses, namely Enteroviruses and Rhinoviruses. Coxsackie viruses comes under Enteroviruses. Let's see the general description of Picorna viruses. They are RNA viruses, spherical in shape, they are non enveloped and they have viral proteins in their capsid. How are they transmitted? The most common route of transmission is fecal oral route. When you drink contaminated water containing the viral particles, you can get the infection. The other common route of transmission is by respiratory aerosols, which is spread, by, which spread in the respiratory droplets from infected patients. The incubation period of Coxsackie viral infections is about 2 to 9 days. There are two main groups of Coxsackie viruses, namely group A Coxsackie viruses and group B Coxsackie viruses. Now how do they classify the Coxsackie viruses into two separate groups? Initially, they did some experiment in the suckling mice. What they did is they injected the virus particles intracerebrally into the mice and they observed the changes. There were two common changes, namely spastic paralysis and flaccid paralysis. Based on that, they classified Coxsackie viruses into group A Coxsackie viruses and group B Coxsackie viruses. Before continuing to watch this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Now let's talk about group A Coxsackie viruses first. When injected intracerebrally into the mice, they produce flaccid paralysis in the mice. In humans, few serotypes of group A Coxsackie viruses can cause aseptic meningitis. They can also cause herpangina, in which there will be vesicle-like blisters in the oral cavity and pharynx. A very important thing to know about group A Coxsackie viruses is that they can cause a disease known as hand foot mouth disease in which you get vesicle like blisters over the palms, feet and in the oral cavity. They can also cause acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis in which there will be congestion and reddish discoloration of the conjunctiva. Group B Coxsackie viruses can infect any age group. They most commonly uh, infect the children particularly. When injected intracerebrally into the mice, group B Coxsackie viruses will cause spastic paralysis. All serotypes of group B Coxsackie viruses can cause aseptic meningitis in humans. They can also cause pleurodynia, which is chest pain, myocarditis, which is inflammation of the myocardium, hepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver, pancreatitis which is inflammation of the pancreas which can be so severe uh, so severe to an extent that it can cause diabetes in children and they can also cause pneumonia you can see the fact that group B Coxsackie viruses can almost involve any system in the body lab diagnosis how do you diagnose Coxsackie viral infections first of all we need to collect the specimen the appropriate specimen has to be collected for the appropriate infection. For example, in herpangina, where there will be vesicle-like blisters or the oral cavity and pharynx, specimen has to be collected from throat swabs and from the lesions. So according to the site of infection, the appropriate specimen has to be collected. The virus can be isolated by various methods. One of the methods which can be used is intracerebral inoculation in mice. As I told you earlier, when you inject the virus into the uh, into the brain, that is intracerebrally into the mice, what can happen is that they can produce either flaccid paralysis or spastic paralysis. If the virus produces flaccid paralysis, they are group A Coxsackie viruses. If they produce spastic paralysis, they are group B Coxsackie viruses. Another test which is highly sensitive and highly specific is 
polymerase chain reaction which is abbreviated as PCR. This is one of the very commonly uh, trusted tests so because the results are highly sensitive and highly specific. Serological tests can also be used in which we actually detect the antibodies against the viral particles in the patient's serum. We, we can detect specific uh, rise in antibody titers uh, such as IgM and IgG. IgM titer rise denotes a current infection. IgG titer rise denotes a past infection. Help me to make more videos by donating me on Patreon. The link is given in the description of this video. Please check it out. We came to the end of this video. Please leave your valuable suggestions in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you.